Will commissioners please check in? I'd like to call to order the Butte Silver Bow Council of Commissioners Committee of the Whole Meeting for Wednesday, March 22nd, 2023. Can we, clerk, can we have a roll call? One presiding, 10 present, two absent. Thank you. Please let the record show that Commissioner Anderson and Fortune are excused. Fortune are excused. Commissioner Sorge, will you lead us in the prayer and the pledge? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, fellow commissioners. Almighty God, we implore you, look upon us and guide us this night as we make decisions which will greatly affect our communi community of Butte Silver Bowl. Direct our thoughts, words, and deeds so that we please you and best serve our fellow citizens. Amen. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, All right, welcome. I'll uh, now call for all public comment on any items on the agenda. All right, seeing none, report of the chair. We had our uh, commissioner's training on Monday, uh, which went well. There was a lot to think about and a lot of great questions. Uh, it went about four hours, so uh, I think it was <laughs> Um, well worth it and I just want to thank Commissioner Shea for doing all the heavy lifting on that and putting that together um, it was a really great training and um, we may have something maybe not quite as long but uh, in the future so um, we'll move into section one bid openings public hearings and or presentations Communication number 2023-127, Angie Mulliken, Public Works Budget Manager, requesting Council of Commissioners approval to hold a public hearing on March 22nd, 2023 for unanticipated revenue, Department of Natural Resources and Conservation grant for the Community Wildfire Protection Plan. Uh, County Attorney, do we have proof of publication? Uh, we do have proof of publication and it appears to be in order. All right. Ms. Mulliken. Yes. I am Angie Mulliken. Um, sorry, I said that wrong. Chairman, commissioners. <laughs> it's <laughs> all Angie good. Angie Mulliken. Um, I live at 1221 First Street. First grant is for the Community Wildfire Protection Plan, CWPP, which is a community based focus on identifying and addressing local threat of wildfire. The CWPP identifies the values of our community shares that are at risk to wildfire and presents strategies to coordinate response, mitigate impacts, and reduce hazards. The process of developing a CWPP can help a community clarify and refine its priorities for the protection of life, property, and critical infrastructure and wildland urban in interfaces, or use as they're called. The grant is for 50,000 from Montana DNRC, WP, DNRC CWPP grant program that was awarded to Butte Silver Bow to help cover the cost of contracting an outside contractor that specializes in the facilitation of the CWPP update process and for the preparation of the final report. The project is currently underway with BJNA. The intent of this project is to begin the process of reducing the risk of wildfire and protect our community's valuable 
valuable assets at risk, such as firefighters, emergency responders, natural landscapes, parks, area homes, businesses, health and air quality, and critical infrastructure. All right, thank you. Are there any questions from council members? All right, seeing none, I'll open the public hearing. First call for proponents. First call for proponents. First call, second call for proponents. Third call for proponents. First call for opponents. Second call for opponents. Third call for opponents. Public hearing is closed. Moving on to the next public hearing, communication number 2023-128, Angie Mulliken, Public Works Budget Manager, requesting Council of Commissioners approval to hold a public hearing on March 22nd, 2023 for unanticipated revenue, Department of Natural Resources and Conservation for the Landscape Scale Restoration Grant for the Basin Creek Watershed Restoration Project. Um, Ms. Mulkin. Oh, I mean, <laughs> thank you, County Attorney Shea. Sure. Sure, um, and, and I've checked uh, the, the uh, publication also for uh, 2023, 129 also, um, for the two remaining public hearings. Uh, there is proof of publication and they appear to be in order. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Ms. Mulliken. Me again. <laughs> this grant is for 255,000 from the USDA Landscape Scale Restoration Fuel Reduction Grant that was recently awarded to Butte Silverbow to help cover the cost of contracting with an outside crew to conduct a fuel reduction effort on approximately 100 acres of Butte Silverbow property adjacent to the Basin Creek Reservoir. The intent of this project is to continue the process of reducing the risk of wildland fire and catastrophic loss of Butte's most productive and economical water supply. The project is currently in the planning stage with implementation expected to begin in the fall of 23. Okay. Are there any questions from council members? Seeing none, I'll open the public hearing. First call for proponents. Second call for proponents. Third call for proponents. First call for opponents. Second call for opponents. Third call for opponents. Public hearing is closed. Next public hearing, communication number 2023-129, Angie Mulliken. Public Works Budget Manager requesting Council of Commissioners approval to hold a public hearing on March 22nd, 2023 for unanticipated revenue, Department of Natural Resources Conservation Grant for Phase 2 of the Fuels Reduction Project for the Basin Creek Watershed. Ms. Mulligan. Thank you, Chairman, Council of Commissioners. This grant is for a $50,000 Montana DNRC hazardous fuel reduction grant that was awarded to Butte Silverbow to help cover the costs of contracting with an outside crew to conduct a fuel reduction effort on approximately 18.5 acres of Butte Silverbow property adjacent to the Basin Creek Reservoir. The intent of this project is to continue the process of reducing the risk of wildland fire and catastrophic loss to of Butte's most productive and economic water, economical water supply. The grant requires a 25% match. However, the match requirement can met, be met with in-kind contributions towards the completion of the hazardous fuels reduction project by BSD personnel. The contractor phase cutting and piling of dead and dying trees is complete. BSD personnel will begin burning the piles that were created this spring. Thank you. Are there any questions from council members? All right, seeing none, I'll open the public hearing. First call for proponents. Second call for proponents. Third call for proponents. First call for opponents. Second call for opponents. Third call for opponents. Public hearing is closed. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to presentations, communication number 2023-136, 
John Reardon, BSB Commissioner, District Number 8, requesting Council of Commissioners approval for 10 of the recipients of the economic mill levy monies to give a presentation on Monday, March 22nd, 2023. All right, we will, first on our list is uh, Main Street, Uptown Butte. Please Thank say you. your name and address for the record, please. Sure. George Everett, address is 66 West Park Street, Suite 201. Uh, I'm here to report on two grant projects and uh, to say thank you to the council for the funding, which was a small but significant uh, part of the projects that we completed last year. The first, uh, we planted approximately 86 trees on entryway streets in Uptown Butte. We proposed to do 25 to 50, but we were able to cobble together funding from different sources and volunteers and a lot of uh, uh, collaboration and people working together. So we actually ended up doing 86 trees for, for that. Um, the, the money that we got from the, the council from the Economic Mill Levy Fund was used for the trees, uh, soil, uh, as well as uh, labor, some labor to help plant the trees, but also for water, which was a uh, surprising expense last year during the drought. Uh, we spent about $5,000 on water to have uh, the trees stay alive, which we, we hope when the spring hits, they will be still alive, so we'll see. But uh, uh, the second project was the uh, Montana Folk Festival. We asked for $12,000 to help with marketing for the uh, uh, effort to attract people to Butte from the surrounding area of the region. And uh, we uh, received 9,000, which we put towards advertising in radio, print, um, um, also digital ads. We, uh, even though our reach was beyond our borders uh, to other states, our, the, the money was spent in the local community with people who had uh, say like uh, ABC Fox or KXLF or NBC Montana, they are able to place advertisements in the surrounding region without us sending the money somewhere else. So it, w it contributed to about a $30,000 budget for advertising, which uh, we will uh, need that much or more again this year. So I'd be happy to answer any questions if anybody has any about the, the effort to either one of the projects. Uh, thank you, Mr. Everett. 86 trees, that's great. Um, and then, as always, the, the Folk Festival. Um, always always great to give some money to that. Do commissioners have any questions? Commissioner Mankins. Uh, thanks, Mr. Everett, for what you do. And again, with those trees, that was great. Um, and continuing on with those entryways and exit ways to kind of beautify our community. Um, the one thing with your advertisement campaign, could you tell me a little bit more about the advertisement campaign and where you kind of got some money or who has helped out? Oh, and who, uh, yeah. we, Mr. We, Everett. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, uh, Commissioner Mankins. Uh, yes, we, were, we received funding from the TBID as well and also had general sponsorship funds that we used for that purpose. But uh, we used it for, well, as a, a you, you wanna know what we used it for or? Yeah, yeah, for, uh, a program guide which we distribute throughout the state in all the lead papers that goes out in June or so. But TV advertising and digital advertising through the Montana Standard, uh, um, ABC Fox, um, and also uh, NBC Montana. And a uh, full page ad in Distinctly Montana, which was uh, uh, distributed throughout the state. And uh, Spokane uh, Public Radio is another place where we, we place funds for advertising. Underwriting, it's called. But. Follow up, follow up, Commissioner Makins. Oh, okay. Um, I'll, I have a question on that. Can you, were the, the TIBID, TIBID funds matching to the economic, or can you share how much? They were, yeah. Okay. It was uh, uh, 15 for advertising. Okay, so. thank you. Are there any other, Commissioner Thatcher? Uh, thank you, Chairman Fredrickson. Um, thank you, Mr. Everett. I just have a question. So. 
for your advertising, is there a way to, or did you guys implement any way to measure the impact of your advertising? Or do you, is there, you know, like any information regarding that? First question, and then second question is, could you tell me roughly how many people um, the Folk Festival brings to yeah, sure. view every Commis year? Uh, Mr. Everett. Thank you. Commissioner Thatcher, yes. Uh, in most years, but not last year, we have a survey on site. We'll be doing that this year. We weren't able to have the volunteers who do the survey that tell people will tell us where they found out about it. But we do get information from the advertising or advertisers about uh, where uh, you know the impressions, where the the ads are, and we get to see, and then we can compare that to where people say they're from. We we estimate there were about 160. 160,000 people who attended over the three days, which was a, comparable to 2019. A lot of the metrics we used to measure are, uh, it was very similar to 2019, except we don't have the, the survey that we had in 2019, but we do have that, which is, uh, we, we had a downtime on Saturday and we felt it in terms of, the, there was a storm and some people left the site, but they came back, which is, we always hope that they'll turn around and come back uh, Saturday af Saturday afternoon. It's almost predictable we're going to have some weather on that day. So. Thanks. Are there any other questions? As always, thank you, Mr. Everett. Thanks again very much for the support. It was, like I said, it was very significant to have the, the council support these projects because it shows the buy-in from the county. But we see that in so many other ways, but this was actually uh, much, very much appreciated. Thank you. All right. All right. Now we'll uh, we'll call up Advantage Butte for the for the next presentation. Can you please say your name and rec a name and address for the record, please? Certainly, Mr. Chair, members of the council. My name is Rody Holman. I live at 1106 West Mercury Street here in Butte. I'm here tonight to speak on behalf of the board director. Board of Directors for Advantage Butte. I do have a, a written handout I'll pass out as well. Uh, once again, uh, we just want to come up and thank the city and county of Butte Silver Bowl for all of the, the, the funding and support that um, Advantage Butte has received over the course of uh, the past several years. Um, Advantage Butte was formed nearly 20 years ago as a means to try and attract sporting related events to the community to try and create some economic development activity. Uh, and we've done just that. Y you've heard me talk before that uh, the sexy part of economic development is the, is the recruitment aspects that you read about in the tax increment district and in other areas throughout the community. But I would argue that uh, what Advantage Butte does by virtue of business retention and business expansion is equally as important. I always used to think of economic development as a three-legged stool and you can't have uh, a successful economic development program without those three legs working to, in tandem. So uh, that's the, the history of, of, of Advantage Butte. Uh, to, to date we have uh, assisted with funding of over 160 four or five events so since, since 2004, which created a significant economic impact in the community of uh, well over $40 million. What we do is we use a conservative estimate that is passed down by the Montana Department of Commerce to try and measure economic activity as a result of sporting related events. And as you well know, we've been using the same figure for the past several years, well, I think it's probably pretty stale. We all know that uh, it costs a lot more to sp spend nights in motel rooms and feed your family and go have a beer at the local uh, pub, so it's just a lot more expensive. So we think the economic impact, particularly the most recent uh, uh, version you have before you, is actually a little little light. In any case, we've been asked to uh, to provide to the council um, what we utilize the money for. Last uh, funding cycle, we actually applied for $30,000 and we realize that that's a lot of money, but we also feel like we do a nice job with that money for the benefit of the community. We were uh, the recipients of $11,000, uh, $12,000, excuse me, last funding cycle. Uh, and uh, on page three of that application or that document, you can see kind of the events that we uh, participated in 
we participated in the Montana Tech Big Sky Volleyball Challenge, the, the Blocktober uh, Volleyball Classic, the District 12C Boys and Girls District uh, Tournament, uh, and the Class AA and A State Track Meet. That is just the, those are just the events that we participated in that we earmarked your funds for. There are several other events out there that we participated in as well. Uh, as an example, uh, the Mining City Duels Wrestling Tournament, we participated in the hospitality. The AA Basketball Tournament, we participated in the hospitality. We are continuous um, um, partners, if you will, with the Montana High School Association. So we, part we put on a nice venue for their convention when they're here in town. Uh, those are where the decisions for these types of tournaments are made, and so we want to make sure and do a nice job rolling out the red carpet for the community. Uh, again, Mining City Wrestling Duels Hospitality. Uh, a lot of the, the wrestling uh, rent at the Butte Civic Center, a lot of this money that we do receive actually rolls back into the city and county of Butte Silver Bow's uh, Butte Civic Center. So we are in effect trying to, to help help the Civic Center as well. Uh, that's really all I have. I just want to thank the, the commissioners. Uh, I know we've had a long-standing uh, positive relationship and we certainly appreciate the funding that we've received in the past uh, and we'd like that to continue. I think that sends a strong message to not only the members that essentially tax themselves by becoming members of the, of the Advantage Butte um, and pay for this, they understand the benefits, but it also sends a message to uh, other, other areas that, you know, Butte is serious about this stuff. They understand that heads and beds matter uh, when it comes to sporting related events. And uh, so we, uh, we appreciate the efforts, uh, we appreciate the support, and uh, we look for, uh, for uh, a longer standing relationship to continue. I'd be happy to answer any questions any of the committee members may have. Thank you, Mr. Holman. I'm always just so impressed with your organization and, and what you do, so thank you. Um, I mean, these, these numbers are just fantastic. And uh, I mean, there's not even, you don't even have the one, I'm sure you had a big part in the double-A tournament that was here a couple of weeks ago as well. We so. participated and then just as an example, you know, just being in the business, um, we got, we had the state track meet last year. Well, um, guess what? Guess who MHSA called <coughs> this year when the recipient of that track meet this year wasn't ready or wasn't available, they called us. So wow. again, uh, you know, we jumped in with, uh, with both feet to try and help. I mean, those are big events for the community and uh, they do create economic impact. And, you know, if you look for return on investment. I think you'd be hard pressed to find uh, find another organization that can actually leverage the dollars that you folks commit to this, uh, uh, you know, to this program. Uh, return on investments is r enormous and, and I have all the respect in the world for all the other organizations too. In fact, I'm part of another organization that just presented uh, on their board. Um, but I think that, uh, you know, the, the good things that we do are measurable and I think that's proves out in this document. Yeah. Um, questions for commissioners, or from commissioners. Commissioner Sorge. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Rody, thank you, and, and you're absolutely right. You know, you've been doing a lot for a lot of years, and uh, it's a kind of a thankless job in a, a lot of ways. You put a lot of, you and your board put a lot of hours in. Um, kind of off topic, you know, you got 11,000 from Butte Silver Bowl, and I know it takes a lot more than 11,000. What other mechanisms? Are you also getting money from Tibbet? Are you getting money from, are they? Sure, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Holman. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Sorich, thank you for the question. So as I alluded to, maybe it wasn't very clear, but we have membership monies. So the biz there is a business, a, a, a faction of the business community that contributes uh, to become members or to be members of Advantage Butte. So that helps us. And then this past year, we were the recipients of TBID money. We did end up receiving uh, $12,500 from the TBID as well. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so that, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to leverage those resources as well. I think um, in our discussion, we've had further discussions with the TBID. Uh, I, I can tell you that um, those discussions have been positive um, and uh, they've leaned on us to try and continue to leverage the city and county. They've often talked about trying to do a matching opportunity between between them and, and the city and county. So there's there's a little bit of that, but I think it does send a strong message that um, it's not just the TBID, it's not just the membership, but the local government as well. So, yeah, thank you. All right, uh, that that's great news. I know that that question is seems to always come up every year that I've 
you've come up and presented to us, so it's nice that you're um, tapping into those funds. Uh, Commissioner Thatcher. Thank you, Chairman Fredrickson. Thanks, Rody. Um, just looking over this, I'm just curious, where does the multiply, how do you get the, the value of to multiply by 40.56 times? So yeah. if you look at this um, earlier in the, in the, par in the page, second page, um, the economic impact, the Montana Chamber of Commerce has established a formula to assist communities in measuring, and it's just based on the, each team, uh, team members valued at 100 bucks per day, with an average team being 18, and that's kind of teams, but also coaches, uh, managers, that type of stuff. Each team bringing two fans per athlete, um, so that's kind of the, the, the measure that they've provided us to try and uh, or the, the, the metric, if you will, that they provided us to measure our impact. Follow up, Commissioner Thatcher. Uh, thank you again. So you'd say that this um, estimated economic impact of $1.2 million is pretty on par? Well, I, I would say that um, when we applied for the money, you, you'll see that when we applied for the money, we had requested 30000 and based upon that conservative metric that's provided by the Montana Commerce Chamber of Commerce, that multiplier was 40.56 times. But re in reality, the 12,000 that we were awarded, we turned that over 101 times in the community as a result of those events. Does that make sense? I hope I'm clear. Okay. Any other question from commissioners? Can I make one comment? Oh, yeah. Quick comment. Rody, thank you again for being here. I guess my comment is, you know, Advantage View is also bringing in these events when there's nothing else going in town. And that's, I think that's a big thing. You know, there's uh, it's keeping the hotels alive and the restaurants and ta taverns and everything else. So I think that's an important note. Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman, uh, Commissioner Sorch, we wholeheartedly agree some of the timing of these events. You know, we don't necessarily or can't necessarily control the tempo of the events, but as an example, next year, we're gonna have three back-to-back-to-back -back -back weekends in Butte, which are gonna be huge in March. So um, those are pretty nice things to have in the community. And I will pick up on one point that you made earlier, which is, um, the efforts of the Advantage Butte um, and the Board of Directors. It is 100% volunteer there. We don't have any paid positions. So um, the work that we do is truly for the benefit of the community. And I think that that's really important as well. So All right. thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, next we'll move to uh, Alpha Technology. Please state your name and address for the record. Um, so I'm Jessica Andriolo. Um, I'm the senior technical staff at Alpha Technology. Um, we're at 2904 Silverbow um, here in Butte. Um, I'm here with the president of Alpha Tech, Jack Skinner. Um, and so I know a lot of you. Did you oh, can you uh, put the microphone a little bit? Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Is that good? Yeah, that's good. Okay. <laughs> So I, I know most of you, I think, know who we are over the last um, several years. Um, but for those of you who don't know us, um, Jack and I work at Montana Tech. Um, Jack is the department head of mechanical engineering, um, and I'm a, a research associate. And we worked on a ton of technology up at Tech that doesn't necessarily get out into the community. So we patent it there, and then it kind of stays there. And so Alpha Tech, um, over the last, um, you know, I don't know, eight, nine years or so, has been working to take that technology, license it, and turn it into products that actually get out into the world. Um, and so that's what we're, we've been trying to do with, um, with Alpha Tech. Um, I wanna thank um, the commissioners um, over the years, not only financially, but just coming here and engaging with you guys has been super rewarding for us to come here and talk to you guys about what we're trying to do um, trying to get Butte invented, Montana Tech invented um, technologies um, out into the world. So I just want to thank you guys for always supporting us um, on that journey. Um, last, this last round, um, we were granted $10,000 
Um, we asked for funding to um, help um, secure our intellectual property, um, to um, start to build infrastructure, and to promote commercialization. Um, and we were talking specifically about um, two medical technologies and um, the Praxis Center, and so I'm gonna reference those three things um, that are on the back here of these, these sheets that we gave you. Um, so we have a handheld electrospinner for on-demand wound care that we've been working on. Um, this is something that got a lot of attention. We've won awards for this technology. Um, currently, we are trying to patent it internationally. There's some um, competing technology that we had to differentiate um, with, um, and we are negotiating with patent <laughs> reviewers. So if you're not familiar with the patent process, it takes, it takes years for a patent to be granted. Um, and so this is currently internationally patent pending, which means we're going back and forth with our lawyers and patent reviewers in the EU and here in the United States to try and secure um, intellectual property rights um, for this technology. Um, so that obviously takes funding for um, attorneys, but it also supports Montana Tech. So we have a facilities use agreement at Montana Tech. And so as we're developing that this technology, we do a lot of it at Montana Tech and we pay fees to use their facilities. Um, currently what we're doing with this technology is trying to adapt it for adverse environments and so you could put it in a, an ambulance or it could go out into the field and whether it's humid, windy, all those sorts of things, we've, we're trying to adapt the device um, so that it's reliable in those situations which medical devices have to be reliable in all those situations. So at um, research wise and development wise, that's what we're doing um, and we're also working with our lawyers to secure intellectual property. And so the, the money that we get goes towards, goes towards lawyers' fees, it goes towards um, licensing, and it goes towards um, paying the school for to use their facilities. Um, the second thing we talked about is the antiviral ad additive, um, which um, is something I think is super exciting. Um, NIH, um, I've talked about in the past, um, classified it as highly active against three strains of HPV. Um, we've shown that it stops cold sores in mice. Um, so this is something we've been working on um, for a long time. Um, also, we've formulated these in products and given them to people. Um, so we've been working on this technology for a long time. Right now what's really important is identifying the fundamental mechanism of action, which is really important for the FDA to see in order for us to move forward towards clinical trials. Um, and so that's what we're doing at the school. And so again, this supports licensing fees, um, paying Montana Tech to use their facilities, um, and going forward with that, with that process. Um, and so the last thing we talked about um, last year was that we signed a letter of intent with the Praxis Center. Um, the Praxis Center originally wanted to have a, a business incubator. Um, I know plans have changed because it was a many year event. Um, to, to put the Praxis Center together. Um, and so this last week we met with the, with the CEO, we met with Ray Rogers to try and figure out, um, sort of look at building plans and how Alpha Tech could fit into the building um, and, and talk about um, what lease agreements look like and stuff like that. And so at Alpha Tech right now, we're trying to figure out, we would love to be you know in that facility, but we need to kind of figure out um, long-term funding for lease agreements for, for getting into the Praxis Center, which would be amazing for us, but um, we just have to kind of figure out the feasibility of that. Um, in addition to all these were, um, you know, we have recently in the last year switched to looking for investment, so we've done a lot with NIH um, in the last couple years, but now we're kind of looking towards getting um, larger investment for clinical trials, things like that, it's really expensive. Um, and so that's kind of where we're at with these technologies. Um, and I think that's it, if you guys have any questions for us. Um, thank you. Uh, I just have a comment that, you know, these, a lot of these things, I understand they take time, so I'm, I'm just happy that you're still sticking with it and <laughs> keep them moving forward. So um, any questions from commissioners? All right. Thank you guys for your Thanks. Okay. All right, moving on to the Motherload Theater. Name and address for the record, please. I'm Jocelyn Dodge. Uh, thank you. Uh, 
live at 114 Waldron Drive here in Butte. I'm president of the Butte Center for the Performing Arts and thank you Commissioner Fredrickson and the Council of Commissioners. Um, we were very fortunate to be able to continue receiving a mill levy grant in partnership with several other grants for the Mother Lode Theater with our primary purpose in trying to continue to upgrade our theater technical uh, presentations and equipment for the theater to be able to meet many of today's demands so that we can one compete with shows trying to get them into butte as well as reduce our operating costs um, changing over from incandescents to leds uh, and a couple of years ago you funded another grant that also helped to repair the proscenium arch uh, for the visual presentations for the community so I always have to do a little bit of visuals, if I can figure out this. Ah, so this grant did two things. It was partnered in with the SARTA grant as well as um, funding from donations uh, from our patrons from the community. The first was to change over our very static psych lights. Those are the lights that you see up above the stage that help to present all the various colors for all the performances and moving to a moving light but also an LED light. That opportunity uh, reduces our operating costs, improves our capability to be able to um, provide lights for the show. And with that, we needed to go digital. Uh, this is a light board that also was funded uh, through this grant, and this allows us to be able to actually program in the lights so that it all happens much more automatically rather than relying on human power and human error um, that sometimes can happen when you're putting on a performance. And the other part of the grant that wasn't funded through this uh, mill levy, but it was part of this grant, was to be able to make some improvements to our cargo lift. Um, we had a lot of cold air coming through. Um, our threshold, when we come from the cargo lift, going onto the stage, needed some work. So with part of the match that we provided was to make some improvements and repairs to the cargo door, uh, do some ceiling so that also helps to reduce our operating costs for the, for the theater, which is very important for us. Um, the grant that you gave us was $4,000. Uh, we, uh, the total grant project was $44,000, of, of which about $26,000 came from SARTA, and $4,000 from the mill levy, and then the remaining money coming from our donors to the Mother Lode Theater. And thank you, you know, um, we really appreciate the partnership that we have. It's a beautiful building. Um, we do like being a part of Uptown Butte. And, you know, we are continuing to be working not only with Butte Silver Bow as a partner, but also our patrons and our staff for the theater. So thank you very much. Um, yeah, I, amazing work. I served on the Butte Center for the Performing Arts with Jocelyn many years ago and uh, so I've, I've seen the list and you slowly started to chip away of all the work and there's still a lot of work that needs to be done on that building but just an amazing job that you've done um, since you've you know taken over that organization so um, any questions from the commissioners great thank you very much all right thanks All right, now we'll move on to the Myra Cabbage Patch Project. Name and record for the, name and address for the record. My name is Pat Mohan, and I live at 18 Old Van Haller, and I represent uh, the Cabbage Patch, and uh, I really appreciate the help that you've given the Cabbage Patch in the past. It's a shanty town that still exists. And uh, Montana History Club, Butte High, serves a night there with no computers, cell, cell phones, or anything like that. So we, in order to try to make it a better place, we've uh, put in for the grant, the electricity is down at the patch for safety for the first time ever. And then the, the roofs and buildings are being protected. So, and uh, the security system, which we had to install because of various things is in, in uh, 
usable condition. It, you know, we just got to continue to upkeep it based on the numbers that we have and stuff. And uh, water has been, uh, water line has been put in. And it, it, that was eight feet down when they finally found it. And uh, continuing uh, with the installing of the plumbing for indoors. And advertisements, advertisements, the report I had that we finally got, had poster brochures, but we put in the computers is uh, uh, they say that uh, there's about 11% more on the people when they check it. Any questions? Um, yeah, I have a question. I, can you remind us how much how much funding you received? It was about between six and seven thousand dollars. Okay. Um, any questions from the commissioners? I would okay. thank you and the, the kids that spent the night with all the no. years past. Thank you. Sir. All right. Thanks. Keep up the good work. All right, next, Mile High Little League. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, my name is Mike Duffy, uh, 2991 Hecla. I'm the <clears throat> president of Mile High Little League here in Butte. And on behalf of the, the board members, our 350 uh, players each season and their families, we wanna thank the committee for helping us with, an, with a vision that we have for our park and the upgrades to our facilities at Father Sheehan Park. Um, I don't have a lot to report on the progress of it. Um, since we received the funds, uh, we've had a lot of hurdles that we've had to jump through. Um, it seemed like one wall came up after another after another. Um, I'm happy to report, however, that in the last several weeks we've, we've made giant leaps. Um, we've presented a a plan to the Park and Rec Board um, that was read into the record last week. Um, we've coupled with porch and construction on, on plans. We're in the process of submitting for permits and our high hope is to do something this spring uh, to provide the kids of Mile High Little League with a, uh, an updated field, new, new dugouts, new backstop, new announcer's booth. Um, and we're diligently pushing forward as a as a board to make that happen. So, um, when when the project is completed, I'd be happy to come back and present uh, the final final version of that project. So, yeah, yeah. Th thank you for that, and thanks for the the context on what's going on. It's it does seem like it's uh, difficult. It can be d difficult down there at Father Sheehan Park. So. Um, we understand that, and there will there'll be an an access agreement becoming for this council for them to begin work here, um, probably next week. I would say. I believe it was April, the April fifth meeting. Is that? Oh, okay. is that oh yes. Like the we don't we don't meet next week. First Thank Wednesday you. In April, I yep. Is what it, it'll be ready for. So. so, are there any questions from commissioners? All right. Again, Thank you. Also, keep up the good work. It's it's going to happen. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, uh, next, Spirit of Columbia Gardens. I'm Ed Curran, President of the Board of Directors of Spirit of Columbia Gardens. I'd like to thank everyone here for the grants that you've uh, awarded us over the last few years. The last grant we got was a little over 7,600 and the year before the total grant would be $15,000. We used the grant in part to pay the uh, expenses for a new building that we put up next to the carousel building. And it's just about completed. I brought pictures. We were hoping to be done a little sooner. Uh, everything was volunteer labor except for the stucco work on the building. And uh, the contractor had several delays on that, mainly because of uh, hiring people and not staying on the job. But uh, he's just about completed. You look at the pictures, there's some trim work left to be done on it. Uh, we have the electrical work yet to do. 
uh, all the uh, electrical components have been purchased. Our electrician is just waiting for a break in the weather. It will not take him long to do it. And we have just a very little bit left to do ourselves. Uh, we're going to display the original fire truck from the Columbia Gardens. It will be in the front part of that building. And we will have an iron fence. Uh, Haas Steel is building us a fence. So it will be on display year-round. We're going to have an interpret center there, which will explain a little history of the Columbia Gardens and also of the new carousel that we have. Again, I'd like to thank all of you. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kern. I just want to make a comment that um, love the carousel, the pictures. It's coming along great, and uh, and it's just it's, to see how how far this is come, you know. Um, and my my kids love going there. And I love going there. Um, it's just a a great place. So I'll open it up to any questions from uh, commissioners. All right. Thank you. Thank you again. All right, next in the last one that we have is the Montana Gaelic Cultural Society. Name and address for the record, please. Brendan McDonough, 1910 Argyle Street. Um, here on behalf of the Montana Gaelic Cultural Society in Henri Ra, uh, first of all, obviously we'd like to start off by thanking Butte Silver Bow and the Council of Commissioners for your excellent support of the festival. Um, we were fortunate enough to have our festival after a two year hiatus and it was the best one that we have ever had. And I think that it's in part because of the two year break. Obviously people were itching to go and excited to see us back. And uh, we had the most incredible lineup of entertainment that we've ever had. Um, we pride ourselves year after year on bringing the world's best from all over the world, um, Ireland, the East Coast, uh, Nova Scotia, wherever these Irish bands may be. Um, we had a real all-star lineup last year, which was just spectacular. And it garnered a lot of attention from uh, Irish musicians, uh, not only uh, in the States, but all around the world. And we got highlighted in quite a few Irish publications throughout the world just because of the lineup and, and the fact that it was here in Butte. Um, we received uh, $3,500 for 2022 that we used for lodging expenses. Um, I did give a presentation the last two years, but it was uh, to state that we would hold our funds that we had applied for in 2020 and 2021 in uh, our confidence. We were able to expend those funds uh, in 2020. We had an allocation of $3,900, and in 2021, we had an allocation of $2,000. Those two years were used this year to cover our um, equipment expenses, and the allocation from 2022 was used for our lodging expenses. Um, it was the best year we had financially uh, due to uh, three or four major sponsors stepping forward and really helping us out, but um, you know, that can vary from year to year, as everyone knows. Um, we rely on grants and sponsorships, and we fundraise year-round with a volunteer crew. We have a raffle, and I write grants year-round. Um, I garner sponsorships with a couple other folks on our committee. Uh, so, so we did have a very, a very successful year. Uh, we did get affected by weather, uh, which is standard for our festival. We'd be shocked if we didn't have rain one night. Um, we survived being washed out of our last two sets on Friday night. We moved the party down onto Broadway Street and gave the Uptown businesses some uh, a shot in the arm. Uh, the bands loved it. They stayed around Saturday night. We had a, just an incredible night. Um, we don't have any problems garnering interest or, uh, you know, excitement about our festival from anybody that's anybody in Irish music or entertainment. Um, our biggest competition now, there are four Irish festivals 
in the United States the same weekend as ours. We're one of four. Uh, Missoula has tried to resurrect a festival two weeks before, um, so we've been mindful of how we might be uh, good stewards, but still keep uh, the Butte Festival at the top of the game. And our biggest competition this next year is uh, Europe is uh, paying top dollar for Irish bands, so France has a huge festival that uh, has garnered some interest, but um, we're thrilled to be back. Uh, we're thrilled for your uh, support, and thank you so much for your good faith in us. I promise I will bring a, a completed profit and loss statement. I missed that today, but I will have, as we do every year, provide the Council of Commissioners and Butte Silver Bow our completed profit and loss statement so that you can see our complete financials from our accounting firm uh, for the event and just to show you where our, our dollars are spent. But our sponsorships um, and your support here from the council go straight to beat businesses to keep this thing going. Thank you, Mr. McDonough. It's always my favorite, one of my favorite weekends, and I agree we need to, we're starting to get some competition, so we need to make sure that this is a, a beaut event. Um, because it is one of the best things all summer long, all year. So any uh, questions from commissioners? Commissioner Thatcher. Thank you, Chairman Fredrickson. Thank you, Brendan, for being here. Um, similar question that I had for the Folk Festival, but could you tell me roughly, I guess, how many people you guys bring in for Henri Ra? Um, and like, if you guys do anything also similar to Folk Festival that, um, could provide metrics, you know, if those ever needed to be put into something um, that provides that data. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Thatcher. We uh, we don't really provide metrics simply because we're a, a volunteer committee and we just have no real, uh, for us, to be honest, it's, it's really hard for us as a committee to gauge how many people because it's a free event with open gates and uh, you know our, our lecture series this last year was we had it at the Butte Brewing Company it was so full that you couldn't hardly fit another person in the room um, but we were extremely fortunate that we had Michael Punk who wrote Fire and Brimstone as all of you know uh, speak we had Rory Makem, um, Kathy Ryan like they're, they're at the top they are the, like the most sought after people and we were so fortunate to have all three of them here at the same time we also had a, a lady uh ashley davis who gave a workshop at the art chateau on saturday morning which is a songwriting workshop yeah and it was it was full um we have specifically avoided unfortunately in some regards uh we've avoided applying for grants that ask for those matrixes to be provided because we just don't feel in good faith that we can provide that. I mean, there's no way that we can gauge as a volunteer committee exactly how many people. I, I know that we bring a huge economic boon with the money that we spend directly with Butte businesses throughout the year to put it on, um, but we feel that our crowd size has increased substantially since we've moved to the original mine yard um, and, and now go free. But yeah, I, we, we just don't, we don't track that just because we just don't feel that we have, we tried it once, but we didn't in good faith feel that we could provide accurate numbers from that. So we kind of backed off. Yeah. Any other questions? Commissioner Sorge. Thank you, Brandon, for being here. I'm glad you, you have put on a great show for a lot of years. Um, how many years has the Folk Festival been running now? I didn't, I probably didn't hear. Or on we roll. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mr. McDonough. <laughs> My mistake, Brandon. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Understand. Uh, how many years have you been doing the on we roll? This last year was our 19th. Thank wow. You. We would have been at 21 and, and gone strong had it not been for COVID, but everyone adjusted and, and understood the, the circumstances and the consequences, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it it probably benefited us in in a certain regard, just the size of the crowd and the enthusiasm last year for the festival. I think the people were just 
super excited to be back out attending events, whether it be a sporting event or a festival or a concert or uh, going to the mother of the theater, right? I mean, people were just thrilled to be out and about. So yeah, we've got 19 in strong and we plan to keep it going for many more years. Uh, one thing that we're very proud of is we have the same core committee of people that we started with 19 years ago. Well, 21 years ago, I guess, but we've had 19 festivals, but uh, same, same families, same committee, same leadership roles. Uh, so the, a lot of continuity, but we're always looking for other people to jump in if they're so inclined. Thank you, my name is Thank you. Sorry for my gaffe. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Looking forward to the uh, 20th festival. All right, thank you for coming. We'll move to section two, communications. Communication number 2023-107, Danette Gleason, Finance and Budget Director, requesting Council of Commissioners. Oh, sorry. We have one more presentation. I am so sorry. <laughs> How could I forget? Communication number 2023-137, Linda Sager Joyce, Clerk and Recorder, requesting Council of Commissioners for time on the Committee of the Whole Agenda for March 22, 2023, to present the findings and impacts of the state's final redistricting maps. Thank you for having me. I'm Linda Sager Joyce, Clerk and Recorder and Election Administrator for Butte Silver Bow. Also with me tonight is Dan Janosko. He is our GIS Administrator. Dan um, has brought fresh eyes to looking at how we district our um, commissioner boundaries and our precincts. So it's really exciting stuff. Uh, on your screen, you will see what is go what we are as our new boundaries. Our boundaries are set by uh, what the state legislative boundaries are. We take into consideration existing districts that we have and school district boundaries. Our existing districts are really just our school boundaries, but we will be considering some of our other special purpose districts like fire and emergency services districts as well. Uh, the good news is not much has changed since the last census, um, so the boundaries are pretty much the same. There's a little give and take, and we will be cleaning up uh, boundaries based on uh, census blocks so that the lines will be straighter moving forward. It'll make redistricting a little easier. So, um, uh, what we've done is uh, in your handout, the first sheet, are what the legislative changes, how they affect our precincts and uh, commissioner district boundaries. By law, we have to um, redistrict based on um, the Senate and House district, and we have to do it within 45 days of legislature giving that map to the Secretary of State, and that happened on February 24th. So we have until April 6th to get our boundaries, the commissioner boundaries, um, filed with district court. So what on this first page is on um, the, the highlighted districts are the changes that have been made since the 2022, since the 2014 census. And there were 51, um, Looks like we may have for, I might have forgotten to put a page on there. But there were 51 changes that affected our precincts. Um, commissioner district boundaries, which are what we have to change, are based, on are based on population. And we also, at the same time, readjust precinct boundaries, which are based on voters and not uh, population over 18, which you'll see a lot in the census data is population over 18. Um, our numbers range uh, quite differently from the over 18 population. Uh, so what 
Dan made a great suggestion as to why don't we look at precinct boundaries based on commissioner district, so that's what we did. Um, if you look at your paper map over here of your commissioner districts to the left, the precincts are pretty much your districts. Um, and in your district, there will be several what we call splits because of a house boundary or a school district boundary that will change um, how a ballot would look is, is what would cause a split. Um, in Butte Silver Bow, we look at precincts a little differently than the rest of the state. Traditionally, we've looked at them as no splits, like eight east, eight west. Um, we treat them as two precincts. Uh, we can do the same thing within each district and look at them as, as precincts, as those, those cuts within your um, district boundary, your commissioner district, as splits as well, which is what the rest of the state does, or we can look at them as different precincts. There's currently a bill in legislature, SB, I think it's SB 65, I could be wrong on the number, uh, which is going to limit the number of voters you can have in a precinct and the upper limit will be 2,500. The only time that kicks in is when you are looking at boundary changes at redistricting. Um, the third page of your handouts, um, the last has VTRS would be what the voters would be within your precinct. The only one that would be close would be um, Commissioner Fortune's district, um, which would be at 2410. Um, but we're still under that number, so um, I think it would be a safe thing to do. Uh, looking at our boundaries um, more as commissioner districts uh, is less confusing, I think, for voters because now they're not looking for, where is precinct five? There is no precinct five. Well, there will be a precinct five, but right now we have missing numbers in precincts. Five is missing, 13. Um, so we are going back through and we'll be numbering precincts starting with your district, your district number. So for instance, Commissioner Shea's uh, precinct would be two dash some number, and the some number would be the splits within that precinct or district. It'll basically be the same thing as your district boundaries. So um, the second sheet, the long sheet that I gave you are the splits um, so as from what uh, the state said, uh, the, House and the House and Senate district boundaries had to be, and they also look at square um, at they look at population and uh, the uh, area. But in Montana, that's not, not always possible to have equal number areas. For instance, uh, Commissioner Callahan has a very large area, but a small amount of voters, and it's because of the rural areas um, in Divide and Melrose. Um, so the first set, the initial analysis is what was uh, proved out during the uh, GIS evaluation at the state level and then the review analysis and review stats are what are things that Dan um, Janosko looked at um, to, provi to provide numbers on where we're at. Things are pretty equal. Um, there is the only population change was uh, between Commissioner Shea's district and um, Commissioner Fisher's district. Um, there was a loss of 25 voters and 25 gain between the two. And then the last sheet um, is more of a breakdown by precinct. Um, the best way to read this chart is to look at the second to the last column, your commissioner districts, um, and that first column is the current precinct name. So that will help you see what precincts are within your commissioner district and how they may change. Um, 
when uh, Mr. Janoska and I were looking at the numbers on precincts, we probably are going to be increasing our number of precincts by nine. So we'll go from 31 to 40. Um, the negative impact is that is we'll be printing costs and the number of judges we'll have to provide at an election. But precincts will stay in their same locations. Any questions? Thank you. Um, questions from commissioners? Commissioner Fisher. Thank you, Chairman Fredrickson. Thank you, Linda. Very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, why do we have to, why do we have to increase precincts? Because the way things split, um, the lines weren't coming out where we wanted them to be. We could get, we could have kept the uh, more of the configurations like the old precincts. But um, I know that it confuses voters and taking a fresh look and providing something that's simpler for people. At least they will know what commissioner district they're in. Yep, follow up, Commissioner Fisher. Uh, thank you, Chairman Ferguson. Thank you. Um, so when you increase nine precincts, will they, what precincts will they be? I mean, uh, how do you, de is that determined by the state districting or? Um, no, it's determined locally. Locally. Um, for instance, there is a piece of land out in Precinct 9 East that um, is in Jefferson High School District and it's in Silver Bow. And we've always, during an election, a school election, we've always handled that piece separately. And in my head, it just makes sense to break it out now uh, so that we're, no one is confused about how could that be? It's there. Um, it recognizes that fact. And those people will, can easily be handled in the new uh, election, statewide election system. Um, for Jefferson to be able to pull those voters when they need to be pulled out if they're having a school election. Hmm. Okay. Follow up, Commissioner Fisher. Uh, thank you, Chair. Linda, thank you. Um, I think the work you've done has been needed for a long time. It, it looks to me like it's for the benefit of both the voters and the community to uh, equally divide the districts as we have them here for 12 districts and the precinct separation looks good. So I appreciate your hard work. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I think this. I think this looks great. I've I've always been confused by why my precinct was eight, and so it seems to clear up a little bit of confusion on that. Yeah, I think so. Thank All right, you. thank you. All right, now we'll move on to section two, communications. Communication number 2023-107, Danette Gleason, Finance and Budget Director, requesting Council of Commissioners approval of the use of up to 60,000 in ARPA grant funds for the development of the preliminary master plan and to set a public hearing on March 15th, 2023 to amend the fiscal year 2023 budget to use the ARPA grant fund this pre project. We held this public um, public hearing last Wednesday. Commissioner Shea. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At this time, I move to place communication number 2023-107 on file. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there anything on the question? May commissioners please Clerk, will you record the vote? 10 yay, zero nay. 10 yay, zero nay, yay, zero nay. Motion passes. Communication number 2023-113, 20, 
Lisa Carey, Office of Emergency Management, requesting Council of Commissioners approval to hold a public hearing on March 15th, 2023, for the purpose of amending the fiscal year 2022 dash 2023 budget to allow for increased expenditures of unanticipated revenue to attend the annual IAFC HAZMAT conference in Baltimore, Maryland. We held this public hearing last Wednesday. Commissioner Shea. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At this time, I would move to place communication number 2023-113 on file. Second. We have a motion. Is there anything on the question? Will commissioners please vote? Clerk, will you record the vote? 10 yay, zero nay. 10, nay. 10 yay, zero nay, motion passes. Communication number 2023-114, Lisa Carey, Office of Emergency Management, requesting Council of Commissioners approval to hold a public hearing on March 15th, 2023 for unanticipated revenue, hazardous material emergency preparedness, HMEP grant to host a 40 hour ERTI Hazmat Response Regional Training in Butte, Montana. We held this public hearing last Wednesday. Commissioner Shea. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At this time, I move to place communication number 2023-114 on file. Second. We have a motion and a second. A question. Will commissioners please vote? Clerk, will you record the vote? 10 yay, zero nay. 10 yay, zero, 10 yay, zero nay, motion passes. Communication number 2023-115, Lisa Carey, Office of Emergency Management, requesting Council of Commissioners approval to hold a public hearing on March 15th, 2023 for unanticipated revenue, hazardous material emergency preparedness, HMEP grant to facilitate a command and control seminar in Butte, Montana. We held this public hearing last Wednesday. Commissioner Shea. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At this time, I move to place communication number 2023-115 on file. Second. We have a motion and anything second. on the question. Will commissioners please vote? Clerk, will you record the vote? 10 yay, zero nay. Zero nay. 10 yay, zero nay, motion passes. Communication number 2023-127, Angie Mulliken, Public Works Budget Manager, requesting Council of Commissioners approval to hold a public hearing on March 22nd, 2023 for unanticipated revenue, Department of Natural Resources and Conservation grant for the Community Wildfire Protection Plan. We held that not too long ago, about an hour ago, hour and a half. Commissioner Shea. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At this time, I move to place communication number 2023-127 on file. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there anything on the question? Will commissioners please vote? Clerk, will you record the vote? 10 yay, zero nay. 10 yay, zero nay, motion passes. Communication number 20, communication number 2023-128, Angie Mulliken, Public Works Budget Manager, requesting Council of Commissioners approval to hold a public hearing on March 22, 2023 for unanticipated revenue, Department of Natural Resources and Conservation for the Landscape Scale Restoration Grant for the Basin Creek Watershed Restoration Project. We held this earlier tonight. Commissioner Shea. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At this time, I would move to place communication number 2023-128 on file. We have a motion and a second. Is there anything on the question? Will commissioners please vote? Clerk, will you record the vote? 10 yay, zero nay. 10 yay, zero nay, motion passes. Communication number 20, communication number 2023-129, Angie Mulliken, Public Works Director, Public Works Budget Manager, Sorry, Mark. <laughs> Requesting Council of Commissioners approval to hold a public hearing on March 22nd, 2023 for unanticipated revenue, Department of Natural Resources and Conservation grant for phase two of the fuels reduction project for the Basin Creek watershed. We held that uh, public hearing earlier. Commissioner Shea. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At this time, I move to place communication number 2023-129 on. We have a motion and a second. Is there anything on the question? Will commissioners please vote? Clerk, will you record the vote? 10 yay, zero nay. 10 yay, zero nay, 10 yay, zero nay. Motion passes. Communication number 2023-134, Karen Malachny, BSB Health Officer, requesting Council of Commissioners approval to hold a public hearing on March 15th, 2023 for the purpose of amending the fiscal year 2022-2023 budget to allow for increased expenditures of unanticipated revenue <coughs> resulting from Pathways to Recognition Program Task Order. We held this public hearing last Wednesday. Commissioner Shea. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At this time, I would move to place communication number 2023-134 on file. We have a motion and a second. Will, is there anything on the question? Will commissioners please vote? Clerk, will you record the vote? 10 yay, zero nay. 10 yay, zero nay, motion passes. Communication number 20, communication number 2023-135, Ed Lester, BSB Sheriff, requesting Council of Commissioners approval to hold a public hearing on April 19th, 2023, regarding the acceptance of monetary donations from charitable foundations of Dickies, Northwestern Energy, and Town Pump. We will hold this uh, for the public hearing on April 19th. Communication number 2023-136, John Reardon, BSB Commissioner, District 8, requesting Council of Commissioners approval for 10 of the recipients of the economic mill levy monies to give a presentation on Wednesday, March 22nd, 2023. We had all those wonderful presentations earlier tonight. Commissioner Shea. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At this time, I move to place communication number 2023-136 on file. We have a motion and a second. Anything on the question? Will commissioners please vote? Clerk, will you record the vote? 10 yay, zero nay. 10 yay, zero nay, motion zero nay, motion passes. Communication number 2023-137. Linda Sazer Joyce, Clerk and Recorder, requesting Council of Commissioners for time on the Committee of the Whole Agenda for March 22, 2023, to present the findings and impacts of the state's final redistricting maps. Uh, we held that not too long ago. Yeah, so, Commissioner Shea. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At this time, I move to place communication number 2023-137 on file. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any Will commissioners please vote? Clerk, will you record the vote? 10 yay, zero nay. 10 yay, zero nay, motion passes. Motion passes. Communication number 2023-144, Aubrey Jap, BSB Public Archives Director, requesting Council of Commissioners authorization to have Chief Executive Gallagher sign an agreement with Fox Alarm and Technology for security system monitoring for the Clark Chateau. This agreement is still being worked out, so we will continue to hold it. Communication number 2023-156, Jim Keenan, Water Plant Superintendent, requesting Council of Commissioners concurrence to schedule a bid opening for April 5th, 2023 for supplying orthophosphate corrosion inhibitor to be used at the BS or the Butte Silverbow water treatment plant. We will hold this for the bid opening on April 5th. Okay, now I will ask for any public comment on any public matter not on the agenda. Seeing none, commissioners have anything they want to add? Oh, Commissioner O'Neill. Thank you, Chairman Fredrickson. Just wanna let you know that the, the Butte Silver Bow County Fair this year is gonna be at the end of June, the last weekend in June. We get to have it at the original. Just wanna thank Butte Silver Bow for allowing us to have that up there. 
just going to get you guys all pumped up. It's going to be a nice time. We're jacked up about it. I can't talk anymore about it because I'll start crying. I'll get excited. But I just want to let you guys know. I hope to see you all there. Um, JP doesn't know it yet, but he's going to volunteer to be in a dunk tank. I'm pretty excited <laughs> about that, too. So thank you for letting me speak. All right. Thank you for that. We'll be looking forward to the end of June and all the farm animals in, uh, in Uptown Butte. All right. Uh, thank you. Have a wonderful evening. We have a, a motion. To, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. All those in favor, say aye. Thank you. Have a good night.